What's going on, everybody? It's your boy Zoe. No, it is off DFS here to bring you guys some Thursday night football prop plays for today's Denver Broncos taking on the Saints. Um, I personally think tonight's game is going to actually be pretty good. I'm seeing mixed reviews and stuff from everybody on YouTube, Twitter, wherever it is that you absorb your NFL content, so on and so forth. But I actually think that the young quarterbacks might give us a little bit of a show. You do got a decent defense over there on the Denver Broncos side. The Saints, we know that literally I can go out there and probably throw for at least 150 yards on them with the way that their defense is looking. Either way, still still should be a decent game. We get to see the, the future of quarterbacks out there right now versus some of the old legs that I'm honestly tired of watching and seeing out there on the field. But before we get into all that breakdown and everything, as always, make sure you guys go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any of the content I do drop over here on the channel. And drop a like on this video if this video or any of my other videos will help you guys win some money. Yesterday, I did WNBA. Um, as you can see, results over here. I only gave out a couple of plays that I was really actually heavy on uh, for the day. Courtney Williams, those five assists, kind of figured at home. And that coincided right with my Bridget Carlton play. Uh, she hit that in the first half. Had 10 points in before they went to the half. Uh, easy day. No sweat right there for that one. Feebit, she did make me sweat. Took her uh, till the fourth quarter to go ahead and get that fourth rebound. Gave us a push. I'm okay with that. And then Sabrina Nescu the, with the game winner. Ice cold. Knocked that down. Uh, beautiful, beautiful to see the New York Liberty. They are up 2-1. and one. As long as they do not blow this, they have a chance to, to be the WNBA champs, which is going to be a long time coming. It'll be a perfect chapter to close on the story over there for the New York Liberty, as I'm pretty sure Sabrina, not Sabrina, but uh, Brianna Stewart is probably going to be looking for a new team in the offseason. That's just my take and what I'm thinking in regards to it. Uh, nonetheless, still good game last night. Uh, really good to see two really good defensive teams and just all-star caliber players out there just giving it their all. Really, really great to see. I know I'm supposed to be going over the uh, NFL, but real quick before I even do that, uh, big news, which I retweeted yesterday on the Twitter. If you're not following it, check the link down the description for that, is the fact that uh, TNT has reached a sports agreement with the unrivaled um, league that Sabrina, not Sabrina, that Stewie and Fee are going to be starting up in the offseason for the WMA women, so they don't have to go overseas to play, which is really big. Uh, they're going to be part owner in regards to this league, too, which will probably help with the salary and stuff that they are planning on paying these women, which is just huge news to especially keep the women here, but also on top of that, we actually to get to see the hoops on tv which is, is going to be really great um but they're going to be airing it across the course tnt true tv and stream on uh, on max which is just huge if you really just don't understand how big uh news that is for for these women that is actually pretty big uh, on top of that you know I, I had to i had to just call this out the caitlin clark haters are always going to be there and I, I just don't get it i don't get it why can't we just enjoy the game that we had last night with sabrina the, just just the shot that she made it was beautiful it was great it was cold it was cold. But Caitlin been doing that, though. If we want to be technical with it all, Sabrina been doing that. Sabrina was doing all these logo shots and all those things like that, hitting it deep from three. That is why she was kind of considered one of the better three. Well, not even one of was considered the best three-point shooter uh, since Allie Quigley hung it up for the WNBA, which she proved that going up against Steph Curry in that three-point contest. If you if you don't know, now you know. But Arike, I love the clapback on it. Um, same, but they both not doing the WNBA finals, which is actually really big. So haters need to stay on the bench and just chill, man. But anyway, back to business. If you guys are on the Patreon, then you guys already got my uh, one of my main plays that I was really on already for the day, which is going to be our, our Garvili, which I'm going to go much in depth into that when I actually go over two price picks and go over his stuff. But um, this was already posted yesterday um i actually posted that and then i've already posted my full list of plays for today's slate and on top of that i've already started posting slips as well so if you guys want the early access to the stuff but if you enjoy the free stuff like i like i said already just make sure you guys hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the free content you gotta listen to me talk just a little bit i gotta make the video at least somewhat some type of length i can't just come up here talk for four minutes and then just be done but if you enjoy hanging out with me just make sure you guys go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the content and drop a like on the video all right, so heading over to Price Picks. If you guys have got an account, and you want one? Check the link down in the description below so you guys can get that deposit message bonus. Join your boy over here on Price Picks. As you can already see, we have a promo for the NBA season, which starts up next week. I cannot wait for WNBA hoops. I mean, not WNBA hoops, NBA hoops. We get to actually have ball once again every single night. And uh, as you know, four game, five game, ten game, uh, eleven game slates. Like it's just going to be beautiful to have so many plays to choose from and new strategy and everything for me personally going into this i've i've uh, wrapped my head around a lot of things when it comes down to the sport betting thing and and you know not necessarily i i don't want to say chase but not chasing those those big wins and things like that and i honestly i think everyone if you guys calm down in the comment section but seeing the quality in the videos in regards to the plays that i've been giving out from just the place uh standpoint and the hit rate has definitely gone up tremendously uh since just wrapping my head around some other things in regards to just the industry but not only that if you're on the patreon you're definitely seeing it pay dividends as well with all the content that i am dropping and putting out over there on the pat pat 
So going over to the NFL tab over here on Price Picks, um, again, don't be afraid to take some of the um, the discounted lines. You don't have to take some of these main lines that we do see up here. Uh, but needless to say, going into some of the, the plays that I do like today, um, straight out the gate, I'm going to tell you right now. I like this game. I've already said it. I, I do like this game. I think that there's definitely upside on both sides of the ball uh, for us to actually take some advantage of. One, the Denver Broncos. Bo Nix is not a bad quarterback at all. Uh, definitely the weapons could be much more improved, but he is getting a decent weapon in regards to my boy Vili, who's acts to look very well. He's a huge receiver. Dude's like 6'4", playing out of the slot. If you can imagine uh, Chris Godwin, who is not anywhere near uh, as, as much as, as, as stature as what this kid is, Going off for 100 and what I think 11 yards last week, just just a uh, just crazy amount of yards that he went off for. Imagine what a huge target for a rookie quarterback who pretty much can could be a tight end if if we want to be technical. What that's going to do for your already weak in the slot position is going to be great. Needless to say, Bo Nix his 194 passing yards. This has been bumped up from 181. So if you got on that early value, which I did play it over on the books, uh, played it on DraftKings uh, early this week, as soon as those lines dropped, because I already knew going into this matchup, I am going to be always attacking quarterbacks going up against the Saint defense because you can pass on them. They are ranked 28th in regards to passing yards that they're giving up to opposing quarterbacks. We just saw Baker throw for over 320 something yards last week going up against them. Like it, it's it's an easy day, easy picking. So uh, this 194.5 passing yards, I still will take it. I'll take us all the way up to 200 because I do believe Bo Nix will have to pass their run game is trash over here for the denver Nug um not denver nuggets lord i'm already ready for basketball for the denver broncos their run game is trash uh just no other way to cut it uh run game very much not necessarily i don't i don't feel like it's going to be there definitely believe that he will be able to go ahead and pass get those um those short yards or anything in regards to it of course playing out of the slot just comfortability uh, we do i don't think he needs to take those deep shots down the field even though he does like to tend to take those that'd be more for our Corey sutton he might be able to connect with him on one or two two spots right there but i still just feel like that slot receiver that's going be easy money easy pickings right there uh for him in this matchup now if you're worried about the 194 passing yards you definitely of course can come down to the 149.5 passing yards that's that's an easy day i still believe he will throw for at least i still got him for at least 200 yards but if you want to be safe take off the 50 go for 149.5 easy day right there for that looking at his last couple of game logs in regards to what he actually has done so far in the season now granted they play six games and he's four out of his last five going against chargers the raiders tampa bay buccaneers and pittsburgh at least throwing for 200 yards in all of those games the only game he did not do that was going up against the jets who do blitz a crazy ton amount and they are ranked one of the top 10 uh defensive teams in regards to yards that they're giving up to uh opposing quarterbacks throughout the air so Definitely much easier uh, matchup for him. I, I have no no complaint about that. If you want a little bit more bang for your butt, a little bit more juice, 174.5 passing yards. He definitely should be able to go over that as well. He has literally only missed these lines right here in two games so far this season. His first game, which was the first start of the season. And then, of course, a stingy Jets defense. No no complaint in regards to what he should be able to go out here and do uh, here in this matchup. Now, if I'm looking at Bo Nix, that means I definitely have to be looking at some of his receivers that I want to go ahead and play, which I have already talked about it a couple of times already. It's going to be looking at my boy Vili. He is the one that's playing out of the slot. I'm not worried about the fact that he's a rookie or, um, hey, he was a DMP two weeks. Kid had a rib injury after the first game. That's why he was not playing for the last four weeks and just got back last week, had a, a decent amount of snaps uh, being out there. His target share looks very good. Again, playing out of that slot spot, which is what we want to attack when we are looking at targeting uh, the Saints defense. Again, just look at last week's uh, production that we just saw from uh, Chris Godwin. I don't know why, but Price Picks wants to run slow right now for me. But his target definitely uh, getting at least six targets so far in both games that he's already played on the season. Uh, if you were able to get the value, which they had him up here for 10 and a half, for his goblin, 10 and a half was his goblin play early this week. If you were able to get that, easy. This has already been bumped up from the 33 um, that I caught it at yesterday. You definitely can go ahead and still take this. Uh, I like his demon play. I, I like it a lot. That 39 and a half uh, receiving yards, uh, that's definitely going into a lot of slip that I am going to be putting out for today. Uh, if you guys are already in the Patreon, then you already have uh, gotten that. But that 39 and a half, I, I just don't see how he's not going to get there unless they decide that they want to put Sutton inside the slot, which they they could, they can. But Sutton is more of your, your deep uh, down the field threat. Vili is the one that is playing out of that slot spot. So I do like that for him. I don't mind taking a stab at his longest re uh, receiving yard as well for that 15 and a half because he does have great uh, yards after the catch. Um, the uh, Saints, they're pretty shit in regards to actual... Um, tackling out there whenever it comes to actually limiting uh, opposing receivers 
after the catch anyway. So I really do actually like the upside for that 15 and a half. That's one I would put into a five or six flex if I am playing that. The three receptions that has push potential or he can go over that. Uh, either way, I do like the three receptions. Again, six to seven targets a game. That's looking really good for him uh, right there for that three, um, especially if he's going to be playing out of the slot. I just can't keep on just emphasizing playing out of the slot, playing out of the slot. Seven and a half receiving, uh, seven and a half fantasy score. I like everything up here for, for Vili. Just, just cut it straight. He's my favorite play on the day. Everything I love up here for, for the kid. He's smashing. I am very heavy on him today. If he just goes out here and just completely busts, then I'm fucked. It's just the, the way I can just go ahead and put it in regards to how today is going to look for me. Last play that I'm going to give you guys, and this is going to be going over to the other side uh, for the um, Saints, because, of course, we have to have something to run everything back with. Now, Spence, first game, didn't look too bad. Definitely uh, got pressured out there. Tampa Bay, they, they, they have a pretty good defense. I uh, definitely can't fault them for anything that, that they were able to do. But I did see some sparks and some upside that I did like what I was able to see. Some of the connections, some of the, the short passing and stuff like that that he was able, able to go to. Juwan Johnson, definitely a, a major target. He is going to be without some of his receivers, though. He's looking like we're, we're going to be missing Chris Olave. Looks like... um. Uh, Shahid's going to be missing as well. So with that being said, of course, I think the target share is definitely going to be going up for those short passes in Juwan Johnson and Alvin Kamara, those dump offs, those will be there. Just like how you can attack the Saints in regards to this, the slot receiver, those short passes, same thing can be said for the Denver Broncos, which is what you're going to want to be doing on the opposite side of, of this game. Now, Spence Rattler, one of the other things though, when you have a team that is going to be blitzing, when you have a team that's going to be playing all uh, that man-to-man -man coverage, that opens up what? Besides the middle of the field, a quarterback that can actually scramble and a quarterback that can run, which is one of the things that Spence Rattler does like to do. He can actually get there with his legs. So uh, first game going against Tampa Bay, again, a very blitz heavy. You already know they're going to rush the quarterback uh, type team. 27 rushing yards in that game. 21 and a half is the line that we're seeing right here. We are seeing that quarterbacks that actually can scramble, that can actually get out of the pocket and run going up against Denver Broncos. They are doing pretty good so far in the season in regards to getting those rushing yards. Now, if you're not believe me in regards to the actual quarterbacks being able to scramble, we're seeing quarterbacks that, that we don't normally actually even see Scramble for the ball and getting these yards right here. And I'm going to go over it because, of course, I'm enjoying talking right now. So, uh, Chargers versus the, the Broncos. Unfortunately, Justin Herbert didn't get there. Four, four rush attempts didn't get there at all. Uh, Baker Mayfield, he didn't get there at all. But outside of that, we have Geno Smith, four rushes, 30 uh, rushing yards right there. Um, Justin Fields, of course, we know he's a scrambling quarterback. We know he does like to run the ball. 27 rushing yards right there. We have even dusty-ass Aaron Rodgers, who's coming off of an injury, Achilles, showing that that leg is good, that he can run. 26 rushing yards out there. And then last but not least, Gardner Minshew, he's out there. Two rushes, 22 yards, two and two. Spence Rattler, definitely do believe he'll be able to go out there and get there for that 21 and a half rushing yards. Um, definitely can see him maybe going out there, getting me about 25-ish. Um, definitely if that pocket claps and he decides to tuck and run instead of going out there trying to force uh, a pass down there. And I know um, if you go back and look at him in college, one of the things that he definitely tries not to do is make mistakes. And which, of course, I know it's the NFL, different coverages, different schemes, things like that. Uh, but he is very much a, a I will tuck and run instead of trying to force a pass. A couple of those interceptions that he had last week, they came in the second half. Of course, they were down. He had to pass, but also deflections. So not going to fault him too much in regards to that last week. Definitely do like the upside for that 21 and a half rushing yards. Um, if they were to give you a goblin play, I take it as well. If you want to mess with like a full out demon play, take that 24 and a half. I see him getting at least about 30 rushing yards here in this game. Uh, so that's going to be it for me, guys. Hope you guys were able to get a little something, something from this and you guys enjoyed the content. Again, all of my stuff has already been posted for the day. If you wanted to see that, check the link down in the description below for the Pat Pat. Uh, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Share this with your friends or whatever. Talk to me down in the comment section. Let me know what is your favorite prop or your play for today. Who do you have winning this game? I actually got the Denver Broncos going ahead, coming in, doing what they got to do, and getting the dub here for us today. Good luck to everybody. Talk to me. Peace.